this reading is kind of uh, repetition of what we also did to some extent uh, in corporate finance when we did uh, a reading called mergers and acquisition and we would also be doing one reading on alternative investments which would again be focused on private company valuations so at level 2 this theme is constant where uh, they repeat they have repeated this private company valuation at multiple sources the valuation methodology remains the same but the nomenclature changes subject to subject so the whole idea with private company valuation there are multiple approaches first we know that uh, the comparable data is not easily available right so you will have to be very careful about determining which type of model do you want to use so either you can decide to use a cash flow based approach or you would decide to use a relative valuation approach if you decide to use a cash flow based approach using ddm would be difficult because almost all the private companies they would generally not pay dividend so which means we are looking at either fcff or we would look at either fcfe these valuation approaches remain more or less same to the approach that we use while valuing public company except you will have to be very very careful about estimation of cost of equity because specially data like beta or equity risk premium for these type of stocks would not be easily available so once you figure out what is a good estimate of cost of equity then using this approach should not be very difficult another problem most of the vc firms or most of the analysts working in this uh, domain experience is that when you sit with the since there is no market data available you sit with the promoters and try to get a sense of what they think would be their sales estimate next year and next year and next year so if you ever get an opportunity to do this you sit with someone who has recently started uh, a business and someone who is really passionate about you know, what he started and you ask him what do you think would be your revenue next year and next year and then in that meeting you find uh, really really difficult to control your laugh you can't laugh on his face because he is going to pay you fees but typically that's the case with all the entrepreneurs they always overestimate what is the true potential of their business so you need to be really careful while making these assumptions which is on sales revenue cost cost growth and everything else alternatively you might also use a relative valuation so there are two ways of approaching this there is a guideline company method and there is a guideline transaction method guideline company method and guideline transaction method so in a guideline company method if you are valuing a private company and there is a similar company which is listed you find out what is the listed company's price earning ratio or what is the listed company's price to sales ratio or price to cash flow ratio and then based on that you come up with a valuation are you following this so once you have a valuation this valuation is appropriate when the acquirer is trying to acquire a minority stake in the firm if there is a majority stake transfer then to this valuation you also have to add a control premium and then that methodology is referred to as guideline company valuation method have you understood this so example that you could think of uh, let us say we wish to value flipkart now we dare do that but let's let's say we decide to value flipkart now and we decide that a uh, comparable company would be yeah alibaba or let us say amazon and price to earning would be a useless number for these companies but let us say we decide to use price to sales and then we decide to use price to sales we take an average and we come up with a number for flipkart then we will have to decide whether the transaction is a control transaction or whether it is a minority transaction if it is a control transaction then we will also have to estimate what is the control premium are we fine here what would be a guideline transaction method so here you find out 
if is there a transaction happening in the similar space in the last one or two years right so there has been transactions for almost all the online e-commerce companies so there has been transaction for snapdeal and i don't know which mantra and all all these guys have received funding then you find out what is the multiple at which they receive funding and then using that you come up with a valuation there is no need to add control premium because those transactions anyways reflect premium on those premium on those transactions are we clear with this so this is roughly the summary but there is a lot of theory they have discussed uh, multiple life cycles the life cycle of a private business then they have discussed how to think about uh, different scenarios so we'll run through all the theories and then do some questions